Hello, the internet. It is Friday, the 16th of July, 2021, and welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to the 16th day of July, and consequently the 16th day of July. -v. Now, what is July? -v? July -v is where I go live every day for the whole month of July, right here on YouTube. Now, of course, I do live streams daily on DLive. This is an additional stream. Sometimes it's at this time of the day. Sometimes it's later in the day, depending on how the swell's going, how the surf's looking. I'm sort of slotting this into my existence, putting forward uh, more content. Not really sure why, to be completely honest. Uh, we don't really understand YouTube. YouTube is a foreign place for me these days. But I will tell you this, I have been enjoying these streams. Um, what was the one we did yesterday? Uh, monetizing animals. That got dinged, by the way. Uh, dis um, the rights holders to the to the um, Discovery, the Discovery Network dinged it. So that's been actually how many of them been dinged? I've had I've had a community guidelines warning strike for one of these streams. I've had. That stream yesterday got dinged, and I've had two others dinged. So one would argue I'm not doing this for any financial gain, let's just say. I'm just doing this for... Well, I really don't know why I'm doing it, but I like the idea of every day in July doing a live stream on YouTube. I also think that it's kind of like if I wasn't... If I wasn't doing daily content on DLive, this wouldn't make much sense. But because I'm only doing, because I'm already doing daily content on DLive, this seems to be a bit more of a burden or a bit more of a thing. Well, it did at the beginning. What, what are we, 16 days in now? I, I genuinely enjoy it now, but at the start it was like, oh, okay. So with that said, let's move into the content. The discussion today will be about Britney Spears and the conservatorship, conservatorship, Cons conservatorship. I'll be honest, I don't know much about this. I don't really follow Britney Spears. Um, yeah, she's just not some some musical, she's not a musician that I've been that interested at all. I mean, yeah. But I don't know what a conservatorship is either. So we're gonna learn about that. But let me address the chat because what would be a live stream without a chisel chat? That'd be a video, wouldn't it? The whole point of live streaming is to have a conversation. The conversation today will be with myself and David because it's just you and me here, dude. Uh, I began with hello, the internet, and David2010 said, hello, Gibbs. I said, hey, Gibbs, I cannot wait to hear all about Britney. And I said, cheers, David, me too. I'm, I'm uneducated on all this. And David said, I can't wait, bro. David, thanks for being here with me. It's just you and me. That's a funny thing about YouTube too, right? 20, 23,000 subscribers and four people watching the live stream. Out of 23,000 people over the course of almost six years who have hit subscribe to this channel, four people are watching this stream and only one of them is chatting. <laughs> That's why I say I don't know why I do this on YouTube. It's, it's like a dead horse, right? It's like a dead end. By the way, if this was the numbers on any other site, people would say it's dead, right? People would say, oh, what, what's what's wrong with YouTube? It's, it, must, it must be dying. Forget about it. It's dead. Forget about it. But because it's YouTube, it gets a pass, doesn't it? Because of its history, because of its longevity and its lifespan, it gets a pass. <laughs> it's a funny place. Uh, I'm going to have a swig of my water and then we're going to move right into the conservatorship. Cons conservatorship? I don't know what a conservatorship is, but this YouTube person does. What is a conservatorship? This is from Law Offices of Bridget McKay. Now, this is actually quite old, so it's from 2012, but I'm assuming the facts remain. Hi, I'm Bridget McKay, and I'm an attorney. I work in the area of wills, trusts, estate planning. Now, as, as we go through here, we have to uh, be uh, transformative. We have to, although I don't know if that makes a difference because I've been dinged for every, well, I've had three live streams this month dinged for watching someone else's content. But I thought the idea was if you are discussing it and you're trying to break it down and you're trying to uh, 
well, you're being transformative in your presentation, then that makes it okay. So first thing I'll say about conservatorship, I'm not sure if it's conservatorship or conservatorship. It's a mute, it's a willing, so it's a willing partnership, right? So Britney Spears willingly went into this or does this thing start when she isn't underage and the parents, now that wouldn't make sense because the moment she became of age, she'd be able to get out of it, right? See, this is what I don't get. Like I understand the concept of like the parents have a kid who is suddenly a, a star, right? And suddenly well more money than wealth and fame that they can handle. So, hey, we're your parents. We've got to look after you. Here's a legally binding document that allows, allows us to handle. Is that how it works? I, I mean, I guess we should hear from her because I, I, I don't know. I don't get how this works. Like you're a child and you're a child star. So your parents control everything until you become an adult. But does the conservative go into her adult years as well? Sounds like that. I mean, she's no longer a child, Britney Spears, right? Probate, and today we're going to talk a little bit about conservatorships. Conservator. Conservator. Um, one thing I want everyone to walk away from uh, this series of discussions on conservatorships is that it is your last resort. It's your last resort. David, what did Britney's dad do? What did Britney's dad do wrong to set up Britney? So he, so he, if I understand correctly, he's behind the conservatorship, which she, she wants out and he won't let her out is what I understand. But I want to understand what a conservatorship is first. If your trust has failed or there's some discord amongst the family and nobody's honoring the trust or your loved one that you're attempting to be conserved is resistant to it, um, you know, unfortunately, you're in a state of, or you haven't done any planning at all in terms of if you became incapacitated, then you will find yourself in a conservatorship. So, but none of those things fit Britney Spears. She she's never been incapacitated. She's never been unable to. Yeah. I I, I don't know much about it, so I'm trying to like. I'm trying to work out how she got into this. Please consult with someone and look at all of those options first because uh, conservatorships are not something anybody really wants to go through, whether you're the person being conserved or you're the conservator of that person. What? What did she just say? It's not something you'd want to go through? Uh, conservatorships are not something anybody really wants to go through. Then it's then it sounds like it's being forced upon both part both parties. I thought it was I thought it was the family forcing it on mom, upon Brittany when she was too young to know any better. Wow, I'm more, more confused now. Whether you're the person being conserved or you're the conservator of that person. So, what are they? Well, conservatorships again is a court process, much like probate that we've talked about before where the judge names someone to take care of a person who has lost the ability to take care of themselves. Both. So the judge decrees that somebody else can take care of someone else because they're not willing or they're not able to take care of themselves. Was Britney Spears ever, was she diagnosed with something? Was she sick or something? Was that why this came about? I don't know what to say about that, Gibbs. Neither do I, David. I, I, I'm, I'm genuinely more baffled now than I, I thought. I thought this started when she was a kid, and it's just somehow managed to wangle its way through her adult life. But it sounds like it's something that was forced upon her. Upon her. Another David. David, pretty bread, all the way from Ireland. Hey, doing, man? Hi. Did she not have a mental breakdown? Mental breakdown, and that's when it started. Also, I don't know this stuff. Well, good to see you, David. Uh, you you might be right. I, I don't know about that. I don't know much about her. The only thing I really know about Britney Spears is that Tism had a song called Thou Shalt Not Britney Spear. Because <laughs> wasn't she a virgin for a long time? And like she was dating Justin Timberlake and they weren't they weren't having sex. Well, they weren't, but they were. And Tism, one of Australia's greatest exports, um, had a song called Thou Shalt Not Britney Spear. <laughs> Shyla Rose. Now, Shyla Rose, someone who does know about this. Good morning, Shyla. How are you doing? Um, yeah, let's, I mean, we're just learning about this, trying to learn about what a conservatorship is at the beginning. We talked about before, 
where the judge names someone to take care of a person who has lost the ability to take care of themselves, both financially and um, medically, and their person. So Britney Spears, at some point in her existence, she was unable to look after her finances and unable to look after her own well-being. Copper Kreska, hello, hey, hello, Copper, how you doing, man? Well, there was a time when she shaved the head at a whim, yeah, but shaving your head, you know, I've done that, and people have done that before. It doesn't mean you're crazy. I mean, I'm not crazy much. Uh, Charlotte Rose, her dad even forced her to have a birth control device implanted. She has children and was married. So at what age did this get a, a inflicted upon her? When, when, did she, when did she enter this conservatorship and did she do it willingly? That's another question. Do you, does the party go into this willingly or is it forced upon you? Um, in, a, in other words, that doesn't necessarily mean just medical decisions, but where to live. Um, how to live, uh, everything about how you live. So your person, this person will take care of your physical needs. It sounds like this is something for elderly people when like, you know, when, when someone becomes uh, of age where they're making the wrong decisions and they're making confused decisions, they're confused about everything, like, you know, losing mental capacity, losing the ability to drive a vehicle, the ability to walk up and down stairs. It sounds like something that goes on for an elderly person and it winds up with them in healthcare, right? And then living their last years in, in a home. Isn't that what this is for? But how did it get given to a pop star? Was she so bad at her finances and her... Did she earn so much money and so much wealth as a pop star that this was forced upon her? Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, weird. Okay. Uh, who is, you know, what are the roles in a conservatorship? Um, the primary role is the conservatee, the person who needs help. And those are typically, there's two different types of conservatorship. There's just a general conservatorship that deals with adults. Um, and people who have lost capacity to function. Elderly. And there are also limited conservatorships, people who have developmentally disabled um, functioning disabilities. And they do similar things, and, but some of the requirements and going through the process of obtaining them are different. Uh, in the chat, Charlotte says, I think she went crazy because of the control. But when did it start? When that's that's a very key factor here. When did this conservatorship begin, and did she go into it willingly, or was it a was the judge did the judge force it upon her? I mean, I'm thinking what I'm think where, where my head's going here is, if Britney's family or her father forced her into this by law, could something be said like, just just hypothetically, could something be said that maybe uh, Courtney Love could have forced a conservatorship over Kurt Cobain when he was strung out on drugs and he couldn't perform and he wouldn't perform and he was going nuts and then he ended up shooting himself. Is that when this is kind of called upon? If Courtney Love had have gone to a court and said, hey, I'm really fearful for my husband's health and safety. Um, he has a responsibility as a rock star. He has a fan base that he needs to deal with and he's not dealing. He's tried already three times to pop himself. We need to take a legal action here to help him along the way. Is that what a conservator conservatorship is for? And is that how it begins? And I mean, that's another story, but therefore is uh, Courtney Love, was she irresponsible in her marriage to this guy? I'm, not, I'm, I'm just trying to think like, like bring this out and try to work out how this crap even begins. Um, Charlotte says she also said her dad made her perform when she was very sick. See, something like that would be, wouldn't that have been her record label that had said, do you have to go on tour, not her father? Her dad simply wanted to live off her and her sister, Jamie, turned a blind eye for help. 
Brittany has been crying out for help from the control for many years now. Can somebody find out when it began? I, I think that's critical here to the story. Like, when did this start with Britney Spears? I, I, I can't get past this, this concept that she didn't... I mean, she would have had to sign off on something, right? In 2008, it began. And so what... So what how old was Britney at that point? Hey Siri, what year did Britney Spears born? She's born in, she's born in 81, 81, 81, 91, 2001. So she was, she was 27 when that began. So she was well and true, truly into her career as a, she was not a kid essentially. So, so she, did she have to sign off on it or did, was the court just like, no, nah, we think you're nuts. And isn't there a proving ground? Like imagine, imagine. Imagine you got issued with a conservatorship and you were like, what? I don't need a conservatorship. I'm fine. I'm, I'm Britney fucking Spears. I'm good. I'm okay. What are you talking about? And the judge would have had to have, they would have had to prove, prove it, right? They would have had to have documents to prove and records to prove. That's what I'm trying to work out. How did she get into this? I'm going to mostly, in fact, exclusively talk about just general conservatorships. The other person is the conservator, the person who is seeking a conservatorship for an individual who can't care for themselves. So Charlotte says the conservatorship started after she suffered a public mental breakdown. Okay, okay, so there was a situation then. Okay, so her family, do you know, do you know what that incident was, Charlotte? So her family stepped in and said, okay, this is bad. You're, you're breaking down here. We need to help you. Is that what, and, and that's a good thing, right? That's a good gesture from the family. Is it not? She had a mental breakdown in public. I, don't, I did not know about that. In 2008, at the age of 27 or 28, approx. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, their person or their finances. And this person is um, typically a spouse or a family member, sometimes even a friend. This person can also be a, um, an unrelated person or a professional fiduciary. A, 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 a professional fiduciary, so someone in control of her finances, but this was her father that started this. I think this is bad, David. I mean, it sounds like it was done with the right intentions, though. How, by the way, how bad was that public breakdown? What, what, Charlotte? What was the situation? What was that public breakdown all about? How bad, like, was that deserving of a conservatorship, essentially, or was that like one of three breakdowns, or one of seven, or the first of eight months of public breakdowns? What was it? Uh, Jamie, her dad, has full control over all Britney's financial and medical affairs. Well, that's what a conservatorship does. So, I mean, we're, at a grassroots level, we're trying to learn what a conservatorship is, and then we're going to look at Britney's one and where it's gone to, to date. But I think the idea of this is to learn about it, right? I, I'm genuinely con confused by it, but if she had a mental breakdown in public, is that enough to warrant... Does the judge go, oh, yeah, yeah, she broke down, therefore conservatorship? Or is that just like a series or the starting of a process where, okay, we've raised the idea of a conservatorship. We're going to keep an eye on her for the next year or so. And we, if we have to reassess, we'll reassess. But Brittany, are you okay? And then she goes off cuckoo la la. And they're like, she's not okay. Look, is that the, is that the kind of thing we think we're dealing with here? Uh, Charlotte says, I think it started to begin with to take the heat off her and to not get her sentimental health ward to save face. Okay. So so because the public breakdown was so gnarly, they were talking about she needs mental help, she needs to go into an institution, and the family said, no, we'll we'll take that, we'll take that burden, i.e. the conservatorship. So this was done out of care and, and love, right? But it looks like it's gone on past there. Okay, okay. And in some instances, it often is a government agency, the public administrator, um, wow. sometimes petition to conserve an individual. Okay. So those are kind of the main... Charlotte, you got a little linky-poo there. It's kind of strange to grab those out on on, uh, on the, uh, the YouTube machine, but I'll do my best to grab it. I'll just grab the... <whistles> copy the link address and I'll... <whistles> pop it over here. Hey, hey keep it down. 
What do you got there? The breakdown of Britney. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That'll definitely give us a um. That'll definitely give us a um. When did that come out? The breakdown, June two thousand eighteen. Okay, cool. That that's a good one, Charlotte. Cool. That's good. Okay, cool. Of a conservatorship, the purpose of them is to gain financial and control over a person who is unable to do those things for themselves. Hmm. So don't forget, a judge a judge has to decree this, right? So there would have been evidence, and I guess we're going to see it in that video, but there would have been evidence presented to the judge to take the to this to this effect, right? He wouldn't have just gone, oh, you want conservatorship? Yeah, no worries. There would have been facts and evidence presented. Um, in my next series of videos on this subject, we're going to dig a little deeper into them, what they mean, what uh, is required for them. Um, but the takeaway message throughout is it really is something you want to avoid, but if you find yourself in a conservatorship, I'm going to tell you a little more about them. Thanks, Bridget. That was very that was very cool to spark the conversation. Let's take a look at the one that Charlotte just posted. This is the breakdown of Britney Spears. This went up in 2008. Um, by the way, she looks heaps like an ex-girlfriend's sister of mine. I'm not too sure why, Lindsay, you'd be watching my content, but holy crap, that looks like you there. That looks like Lindsay. Uh, her dad originally petitioned the court for temporary conservatorship. It was granted, and from then on, Brittany was his puppet, and he controlled every... So it was originally just a temporary thing. Right, right. Let's take a look at this. In 2005, Britney became pregnant with Kevin Federline's child, Sean Preston Federline. In late 2005, Britney oh went on the day of the Letterman God, show. God, what is this? In 2015, she went breakdowning. She's dancing with her hands and moving around a lot. What is with all this massive movement? Welcome to the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell to make sure you don't forget any notifications that I go live. What the hell is this? YouTube! YouTube, what have you done to people? This is disgustingly stupid. Seriously, let's take this again. Let's take this. What on earth are we seeing? In 2005, Britney became pregnant with Kevin Federline's child, Sean Preston Federline. In late 2005... This guy's dancing when he's delivering the content. I mean, this is... We got... We... we all right, the last stream I do for July, we're going to... We're going to call it... YouTube, you're responsible. And I'm going to go through all of this crap that YouTube makes people do. Like YouTube has given birth to this crap, right? This god awful presentation. <sighs> Baffling. Britney went on the David Letterman show and confirmed rumors of a second pregnancy. And then in 2006, gave birth to Jaden James Federline. So we've, we've established now that you are in fact pregnant. And by the way, I, I just missed all the content because I couldn't get past the stupid presentation. But I'll try to, I'll try not to think about that. And I'll just watch and, and I'll listen. I won't look. I'll just listen. At least he's looking into the camera and not looking off to the side, right? In 2005, Britney became pregnant with Kevin Federline's child, Sean Preston Federline. In late 2005, Britney went on the David Letterman show and confirmed... Hang on, hang on. What age would she have been in 2005? She would have been mid-20s. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Rumors of a second pregnancy. And then in 2006, gave birth to Jaden James Federline. So we've, we've okay. established now that you are in fact pregnant, is that right? Yes, sir. Oh, well, there you go. See, Paul. So at this stage, there's nothing wrong with being pregnant. Oh, crikey. We're going to get dinged for this. Seriously? Ah. You're going to play her music throughout this whole thing? I just muted. Oh, seriously, I just muted it. I've got to be careful for this. I'm going to get dinged for this video because that's. I'm assuming that's Britney Spears, right? That's her music. Well, that's 
four. I'm gonna have four. That's my fourth thing for this month of July. Fuck it. So be careful here what you see because there's nothing illegal. There's nothing mentally incapacita incapac incapacitating. There's nothing wrong with having a baby. She's a pop star. She's of age. She's engaged or married. There's nothing wrong with having a baby. So this is all trying to build up this weird vibe, right? There's nothing wrong with her having a kid. Um, she was even married. She was married to K-Fed. Not even sure who that was. And you never see their son anywhere. David, so was it Brittany in the wrong or her dad, as I don't have any idea what's going on? It looks like... Um, it looks like Brittany might be in the wrong, right? She might have had it. I mean, this is trying to present the breakdown, but at this point, aside from some breakdancing, we haven't seen anything, and she's just had a child. There's nothing wrong with that. Kevin Federline is K-Fed. Okay, he's another pop star, right? I remember she was she was married to Timberlake, wasn't she? Tim, Timberland. Timberlake. While she was pregnant, Britney would go on and do a lot of interviews where she would talk about her privacy and the paparazzi, and it would lead her to break down in a lot of interviews. For a while, people would describe you, they'd say, she's this great young thing from the South, you know, small town girl. I still am, man. I know, I know, but, but then all I'm of a sudden... I'm in good tea, okay? But then all of a sudden, they started to use that Southern background in a different way. The tone of it changed. All of a sudden... They make you feel like you have to... And have your transformation. Well, Madonna, started, reinvent yourself, right? Right, but yeah. they started saying, maybe she's a little bit of a redneck. I think anybody who's doing well in the public eye or whatever, there's always going to be a shift because people don't want to see somebody happy all the time. What do you think it'll take to get the paparazzi to leave you alone? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Is that one of your biggest wishes? <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I would like for them to leave me alone. If you could talk to them as individuals, not as a group, what would you say to them? I would just say that you have babies at home and you have <laughs> You have a wife, and if you don't, you have to realize that we're people, and that we need to, we just need privacy, and we need our respect, and, and those are things that you have to have as a human. I mean, at that point, you're looking at a pretty extreme amount of paparazzi, right? And anybody would go a little bit nuts with that. Imagine, I mean, you just saw footage of her going through a drive-thru getting food and there's paparazzi at the drive-thru window. Like, what, what, and what is the story anyway? Like, Brittany went and got food? Wow, that's front page material. This, I, I think, like, we, we touched on this. Yeah, we can't even pop into the shop for a drink and a packet of chips. No wonder she went mad. We've talk, we touched on this once before. Um, it's, this more sp says... The problem is with is with people, with us, right? Not the only reason paparazzi exist is because we, the public, give so much credit to celebrity status. Me personally, I don't give a flying fuck what Britney goes and orders and what she buys from the store. Like I don't give a flying fuck what any other person buys from the store. I don't think celebrity celebrity shouldn't even be a thing, right? The idea of celebrity shouldn't even exist. Yet the public demand that we get access to their lives because our lives are so shit in comparison. So we make the celebrity and we demand what everything that they do, we want to know about. That's why all these magazines exist. That's why fucking new idea and people and all that crap. That's why they make these magazines because we, the public demand to know. So we send her insane. She's an artist. She's a musician. Yet we send her insane, wanting, demanding that we know everything about her. It's ridiculous, right? And then it's like a circle because 
Not only do we demand that, but that's the way that she's only ever lived. So she doesn't know any other life. So she has to continually face this and we continually demand it. And then she has a breakdown. Something's got to give, right? No, no shit that she's going to have a breakdown. You could also argue, well, that's what she's in for. That's her gig, right? She's a celebrity. She's got to be able to deal with that. Fine. But why? Because we demand it. She just wants to perform her music, right? She just wants to be an artist. She doesn't need, like, it's kind of weird. Like, when when did becoming, well, it be, it's been that way forever. But why why is being an artist also tied together with uh, people knowing everything else that you do? Like, if, if you're a great plumber, you're a great carpenter, does that mean that you come to my house and you, and you fix my piping? I've got to go and follow you home and make sure that you're also a good father and you're also a good uh, gardener at home and like we got to see everything you do. No, you're a great plumber. That's it. You do good plumbing. The, the pipes have never sounded better or the water's never been hotter. That's it. Yet for music and art and um, uh, film stars, we have to demand everything about them. They could be shit at everything else. You could have the best actor on the planet and they could be an absolute garbage parent or a garbage brother or a garbage sister. But they're not. They're actors. We're, we're loving them for their acting, not for anything else. It's really selfish. Hey? It's really selfish. It's really, really selfish for, from, from humankind. It's, it's totally selfish. Britney would then begin partying with Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan. I mean, ima imagine, imagine that amount of flashes blasting at you wherever you went in the in the evening. Like, no matter what you do, there's going to be a bling, 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 bling. And I know what a flash is like, right? Like, ima imagine that. You'd be... Dude, if you flashed a light in my face four times... I'd be getting angry. Imagine it every single time you went anywhere. Pfft. No wonder they wear glasses and they try to hide their faces. It's not like they're hiding themselves. They're like, fuck off with those lights. So it's so, it almost makes me, it sucks to be a human that we're, we're part of this, right? We, we make this. I really, I'm, yeah, I feel, I feel for her watching this. They deserve privacy. Totally. The paparazzi try to catch stars with their bad hair or bad clothes and sell the Who gives a fuck if you've got bad hair day? Who? Do you, do you really think that George Clooney or Brad Pitt is going to look the exact way that they look in that movie every single time you see them? Dude, they've spent five hours in makeup. They've got a wardrobe that suits them up. That, that's because they're acting, right? They're acting a role. You go and see them in real life, they're not acting that role. They're actually living. They're doing the other part of their life called living. The acting is their gig. I, I, I... People suck. Hey, Political Foolishness, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Uh, he says, my opinion on Britney totally changed with the story coming out. It appears now they, total they funded their tyranny on her dime. Is that right? David Prettybread. Uh, something her family should have protected her of, but they decided to take care of the money. Yeah. She was let down by her so-called family. Hi, Brittany. How are you, Brittany? You looking good, Britt? Here you go. Here you go. This way. This way. This way. They're getting a taxi. Okay. Guys, get off the car. Get off the car and get out of the street. Get your shot. Dude, why did I buy for him? We were nice, we did one. Alright, they were great. Brittany! 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 Give me a Clear peace it. sign! Clear it! Imagine trying to drive. Imagine trying to navigate to even get to your car at that point. Unbelievable. People do suck thriving on wanting to see someone in a bad state. It's like... What if Brittany told false info and blame other people and not herself? I guess we'll find out about that. Brittany! You're blocking traffic! Brittany would then go on to do your infamous performance of Gimme More on the VMA stage where she basically just walked around and didn't really do much performing. But even though it was so horrible, it's just so iconic in pop culture. 
Uh, okay. At the risk of not getting dinged, I'm just muting that. <sighs> what is with this mute button? So what happened here? She's not really performing. She, she's not really giving it much, is she? Okay, so I just don't want to get dinged here if I can avoid it. Show how little privacy Brittany really had. I just don't like it when you get in my way of my pictures. Oh, okay. Sorry, Sorry about that, Brittany. I'm right a now. person just like you. What? Are you okay, Brittany? Yeah, fine. Everything good? Yeah. Is everything good, Brittany? Wow, they're chasing her in a store. <laughs> oh my lord, they're chasing her through a store. She's probably gone in there to get a bag of chips or dental floss or something. Could you imagine? Like, if I if I had anywhere near that level of um, celebrity, I'd be I'd I'd be walking around. I'd be walking around in a full mask, eh? From Halloween. <laughs> I'll be walking around masked up just so that no one know like you you would seriously consider a 100% like disguise of who you are so that just just so that you could go out in in society and not have to deal with it it's it's crazy <sighs> Look out, guys. Restroom's over here, Brittany. Looking for the restroom? Come on, guys. This way. This way. She's looking for the bathroom? Where's the restroom at, guys? Oh, man. It's no wonder she, she's flipped out, right? Like, I, I, She should have punched someone. She should have been knocking cameras and punching people well before. Perdsky, hi, guys. Hey, Perd. How you doing? Yeah, this is sad. She can go. Uh, I thought. I thought that person was saying, "No, no, no. She can go into the bathroom. Of course, she can go into the fucking bathroom, and you can't go in there with her. Imagine that's the only place where you can get privacy in a bathroom. Jesus. Sorry, Gibbs. I just want to know the full story about Brittany. So do I. So do I. Her tour, the M and M's tour at the House of Blues. She performed six shows, and they all had a duration of twelve to sixteen minutes. And the box office for this short show was around two hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Brittany, are you going to be performing at the House of Blues? The X Seventeen online fans would love to know. At the M and M's. <laughs> through her short phase of wearing pink wigs and speaking in a British accent, which now is iconic in pop culture. Really? You look pretty, Brittany. How you doing? You going home right now? What? You going home? You look good, Brittany. I look horrendous right now. <laughs> yeah, you look good. You're making fun of me. Oh, my top like come off and it's not a good thing. Yeah, What's up, Brittany? Wow. And this is... This is sad, right? She she's now disguising her her voice so she can get away with just doing regular stuff like going to the shops. Uh, back in the eighties, I met Suzanne Summers at a baggage carousel in an airport in California. We we're both traveling by ourselves. Had a nice chat and helped her with the bags. All cool. I don't even know who that is, Suzanne Summers. I I genuinely don't know who that who that is. Uh, evening, David. All good. Okay, so Charlotte's got another link. Let me just grab that out, Charlotte. I'll grab that out of the chat here. Um, It's hard to um hard to grab those links. Copy link location, copy link address. Okay, so that's your your video is from July sixteen. Okay. I've got I've also got one. What is the Free Britney movement, but we'll get to, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, in the chat, I just got an alert from DW that fourteen people are missing from a single district. Fourteen hundred people are missing. 
Wow. Okay, so not too sure what that's about, uh, Pertsky. Uh, it makes me feel uneasy watching her going through this. I can only imagine how she felt. This is, it's almost criminal, isn't it? I mean, if one, if one thing, uh, COVID-19 would have given celebrities a good wide berth of people, right? Because, like, you can't get within a certain distance of people. They'll be like, yes, finally something to give us back our privacy. How's the hotel? No, the star. Imagine. So the store didn't let him in. starts the official breakdown of Britney Spears. What's up, Britney? Uh, everyone get out. Out, out, out. Hey. Hey. You're going to be on the property. You're going to leave because the cops are yeah, coming Brittany. right here. I'm so fine. Huh? She's drunk there by the Why sound of it. Why are you crying, Brittany? I'm sitting for once and having a nice time with my dog. That's Aww. it? Amid a media frenzy, the 26-year-old pop star was brought by ambulance to a Los Angeles hospital from her Beverly Hills home. Another chapter in her long-running custody battle with ex-husband Kevin Federline over their two sons. As this video provided by Entertainment Tonight and The Insider shows, Spears was taken by stretcher into the emergency room. Her husband, Federline, was at the hospital when she arrived. Come on, Brittany. Brittany, you sure about that he have? I know it's not, but I just want to listen for you. You cannot say yes or no? He's a bodyguard also. Okay. She came in and she said she wanted her head shaved. The hairdresser refused, so she literally grabbed her, the hair clipper and started doing it herself. Bradley, did she say why? I mean, did she yes. offer any information? They, they asked why she wanted to shave her head, and she said, I don't want anyone touching me. I'm tired of everybody touching me. Uh, another employee there told Us Magazine she wasn't making sense at all, and you could tell she's not in a good place at all, and that she's totally freaking out. She was a nightmare to deal with. To a story that is burning up the internet. All of a sudden, this has just gone left channel only. This is not me doing it. It's burning up the water cooler talk. It's Everybody's just burning this morning. It. Yes. Britney Spears. She's bald. Uh, we've got this photo now from the x17online.com. And it appears to show. So who gives a shit if she shaved her head? Who cares? Like, who really cares if she shaves her hair? It's none of our business. Yet here we are, breaking news, Britney bald. Like, seriously? On CNN? Pop star shaving her own head. Goodness gracious me, the pop star Britney Spears shaving her own head. Oh my goodness. Word on the street is she also shaved her legs and her bikini line. Can you believe it? God damn. Back off, guys. Let us walk, please. Let us walk, please. Let us walk, please. Exactly. She's bald. Oh my god. She is completely bald. She is completely bald. We love you, Brittany. How do you like your hair, Brittany? Wow. Imagine imagine a celebrity was like, oh, everybody's asking me questions. Okay, I'll answer every single question. One at a time, please. How do you like your hair, Brittany? Brittany, how are you? How are you? What are you going to answer every... Like, so stupid. All right. Oh, please, please, guys, don't do this. No, no, no. Fuck you. Fuck 
No shit. She should have lashed out years ago. Oh, what? She struck out at us after all these years of hounding her every single thing she does? And she struck back? Can you believe it? Oh, I can't, can't believe it. Fuck. Um, but like, I just really, like, want to talk and just say, like, how nice our world is. Like, it is so nice. Like, I'm going to cry right now because, like, our world is so nice. No, it really is because, like, oh my God, like, the other day I saw, like, this magazine and I looked at it and it said, like, I was pregnant and, like, I went up to my mom and I was like, oh my God, like, my mom knew, like, she was right. Like, always believe everything you read, everybody. Like, because I am. I really am pregnant. And then, like, I went to, um, like, um, this person and they saw it, like, on the USA Today, like, that, you know, like, I was drinking a lot. Yeah. And it was so true. It was so true. And then, okay. like, it was just so weird because, like, then after that, like, everybody, like, you know, just always believe what you read. Because so she's just playing, she's playing their game right here. She's just playing along to it. I was like, and all my management, they totally knew what they were doing when they sent me to rehab. Like, totally. Like, they totally knew what they were doing. Like, it's just so weird how great and nice our world is. And, like, after this, nobody's going to talk about this because our world is so nice. So that's all I wanted to say. So, okay, bye. Okay, thank you, Brittany. Yeah, you know what? You're lucky. We're lucky. The, the paparazzi's lucky. She didn't top herself, right? They're lucky that she didn't pop her own head off because they would be the blame. They would be the blame at that point. And if it took her family to come in and go, this is way out of control. We need to do this conservatorship thing. I understand that. I fully understand it. She's she's had hounding, hounding from the paparazzi, not letting her do her own thing, be her own self. This it's disgusting. This makes me so sad to be. To, this makes me so sad that that people are, uh, want this. People want to learn about this, and people people demand her life. So, what is okay? Well, uh, let's just let's let's hit Charlotte's link here. What is Britney Spears' big win in court? Singer allowed to hire her own lawyer. Actually, hold on a second. The Free Britney movement. What exactly is the Free Britney movement? Britney Spears is one of the most popular and successful music artists of all time. Hell, she's one of the most popular and successful people of all time. And yet, there's a lot of dark stuff happening behind the scenes in Britney's life that her fans and general public weren't aware of. Stuff that she's been struggling with for years. And over the last few years, all of it has come bubbling to the surface. And a lot of that attention has been because of a movement called Free Britney. So, what exactly is the Free Britney movement? It's come to the public's knowledge that Britney hasn't had much control over her life since 2008, right after her now infamous and wrongly memed breakdown. For the last 12 years, Britney has been under something known as conservatorship. See, I, I wouldn't label that a breakdown. I'd label that a reaction. That's not a breakdown, that's a reaction. A reaction, a natural reaction to the level of stalking that the paparazzi has placed on her. That's not a breakdown, that's a reaction. And it should have happened earlier, I think. Controlled by her father, Jamie Spears. Okay, firstly, what is conservatorship? A conservatorship is legal precedence in which a judge appoints an individual or organization to take care of someone who cannot or is not of sound mind to take care of themselves. This ranges from financial to health to other needs. Britney struggled with a battle with mental health since at least 2007 and was publicly shamed through all those years. But even through all of that, her career soared. She made her glorious comeback with the 2008 album Circus, released more albums since, has had sold out tours and starred in a long running Las Vegas residency. To top all of that, she also launched business ventures like her perfume Curious and a namesake lingerie line. So yeah, she was thriving and was making a lot of money. That brings us back to the conservatorship. Her financial holdings and wealth is run by her father, Jamie Spears, and attorney Andrew Wallet, giving them complete control of her assets. Right after her alleged public breakdown in 2008, Jamie petitioned courts for an emergency temporary conservatorship, stating that his daughter could not take care of herself. He was granted this request because of her mental health issues at the time and so right. began so there it is so that's how she got into it he her father demanded it due to her safety and her well-being 
which is what any father would do. And years of Jamie making decisions regarding Britney's finances, health, business deals, and personal life. Decisions that she has since come out and said went against a lot of her wishes. And honestly, some of them just seem against her rights as a human being. But they didn't go unnoticed by fans. A lot of whom believe that the terms of conservatorship were more of a prison for Britney. Enter the Free Britney movement. A website called freebritney.net, launched in 2009, carried a long statement about why they believed Britney does not need a conservatorship this far into her life and career. During the 12 years of Britney's conservatorship, she has repeatedly toured the world, released multiple albums and worked on a variety of television shows. Her conservators decide whether or not she works as she cannot enter into contracts for herself because she is legally not her own person. Britney Pertsky says this could never have happened in Europe. So this is an American thing only? Interesting. Britney Spears needs permission from her conservators to leave her house or spend any of her own money. Many fans have taken to the streets in protest against her conservatorship. Several celebrities have also supported the campaign, including Sarah Jessica Parker, Paris Hilton, Bette Midler, and Miley Cyrus. Britney fans have vocally contested the conservatorship terms and have often questioned whether it was even for the benefit of Britney's mental health and her life in general. Some supporters even believed she sends secret messages on social media. They pointed to instances where she appeared to have responded to comments asking her things like wearing a yellow outfit in her next post if she ever needed help. A couple of years wow. ago, the Free Britney movement gained even more momentum because of an episode of the Britney's Gram podcast, during which the anonymous lawyer, allegedly formerly part of the firm that oversees Britney's conservatorship, expressed massive concerns and raised a lot of questions over the people controlling Britney's life, especially her father. Britney's conservatorship has been extended till at least 2021. In 2019, her father stepped down from being the conservator of Britney's life, citing health reasons. Jodie Montgomery, an experienced conservator, has been running her conservatorship since her father stepping down. Back in 2020, Britney herself declared that her conservatorship is voluntary and that she would rather slowly be allowed to make more decisions on her own. She did, wow. however, state that she does not want her father to be her conservator again and wants Jodie to continue in the role. In November wow. 2020, so she, she's volunteering it then at, at this point. Well, later in, anyway. She should have fled somewhere like Germany. Who did that on YouTube? Charmaine. Hello, Charmaine. Thanks for following. I'm assuming you're here watching. Hello. We're just doing a little deep dive into Britney Spears and the conservatorship. Britney released an Instagram post assuring fans that all was well and that she was in a court battle to remove her father as her conservator. This was after she had taken a two-week absence from social media. Hi, so I know that there have been a lot of comments and a lot of people saying a lot of different things about me, but I just want to let you guys know that I am fine. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life, and I'm sending all of you guys a lot of prayers, wishes, and um, a lot of love. That same month, a Los Angeles court rejected Britney's request to remove her father as the head of her conservatorship. Ooh. In Feb 2021, attention swarmed around Britney after the release of the New York Times documentary Framing Britney Spears. It showcased behind the scenes a supremely talented young artist. I'm going to watch that. I've not, I've not seen that doc. I'm going to watch it tonight. And how her family and the people around her tried in multiple ways to capitalize on her talent, her fame, and her money. It also showcased how Britney struggled with all of this while also dealing with mental health issues and constant unwanted media attention. All of this strengthened the cause of the Free Britney movement which was also featured in the documentary. On the other hand, Britney's father, social media personnel, and lawyers all rubbished ideas that anything is wrong behind Britney's conservatorship and called all of it conspiracy theories. Wow. This all came to head on June 23rd, 2021, when Britney spoke mostly uninterrupted for 20 odd minutes to California Supreme Court Judge Brenda Penny in a much anticipated hearing. Britney for the first time broke her silence and spoke freely about what she'd been going through for the last 13 years. I just want my my life back and it's been 13 years and it's enough. She spoke about how she was unaware that she herself could end her conservatorship and questioned it entirely since she's had a thriving career and is paying so many people's salaries. She also said that she just wants to own her own money, let her boyfriend drive her around in her car and wants to sue her family. I'm okay wow. and I'm happy. It's a lie. I thought I just maybe I said that enough. Maybe I might become happy because I've been in <laughs> denial. I've been in shock. I am traumatized. You know, fake it till you make it. But now I'm telling you the truth, okay? 
okay? I'm not happy. I can't sleep. I'm so angry. It's insane. And I'm depressed. I cry every day. Now, it's important to note that the conservatorship started in 2008 by Jamie Spears and is regarded as a legal oddity for the length of time that it's been in force and for the fact that Britney appears to be an uncommonly productive entertainer. Legal guardianships like this are usually reserved for people who genuinely can't handle their lives, like people with mental disabilities or the elderly. This is that's what we learn earlier from that first video. It seems like this is something for the elderly normally, not for someone who more or less appears with completely in control of their own life and their own existence. I and mean, she's, you know, this breakdown, like I said earlier, not a breakdown, a reaction. Yeah. This has been a focal point of the Free Britney movement, where members believe that this is her father's way of taking advantage of his daughter's fortune, something that he denies completely. And from Britney's description at her hearing, it seems more than accurate. Spears explained this in her testimony about an incident during her Las Vegas rehearsals where she said no to one dance move. She was punished for it, forced to work 10 hours a day, 7 days a week, or worse. If she contested anything, she was not allowed to see her children or her boyfriend. She alleges that she has been medicated with lithium against her will, bullied into rehab, and held inside her home under round-the-clock supervision by a team that she herself pays for. Perhaps the most horrendous and shocking thing so far was when Britney explained that she was implanted with an IUD and that she wants to have children but her conservators allegedly won't let her remove it. I was wow. told right now in the conservatorship I'm not able to get married or have a baby. I have a ID inside of myself right now so I don't get pregnant. I wanted to take the ID out but this so-called team won't let me go to the doctor to take it out because they they don't want me to have any more children. Wow. Her just over 20 minute testimony and right. various instances of her being controlled not being able to get any that is that would have to be uh that the idea of her not being allowed to have another child that would have to be in writing wouldn't it as part of the the agreement of the conservatorship care while under lockdown in her house having to continuously work and not having access to any of her own money even for something like redoing her kitchen it still remains to be seen what the courts will decide but after this heartfelt plea from Britney Spears herself, the Free Britney movement rising in momentum every day, most people just want to see the conservatorship lifted totally. and let Britney get back to the life she deserves to lead. Her own. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like. That's, that's, that's really, really, really sad, isn't it? Like, maybe, I mean, what I can see is that this might have started with good intentions, the right intentions, the concept that she looked like she was going through a bad stage and the family stepped in. It's definitely moved in from there into, man, we're now controlling every aspect of what you do. We don't care what you say. We don't care what you think. You're in our control and we're doing this. And it sounds like from what the chat's been saying, it sounds like they're doing it for financial gain to live off of her. Family, huh? Far out. Let's take this last link from Sharla, the most update link. This is uh, from July 16 this year. Britney Spears, big win in court. Singer allowed to hire her own lawyer. Britney Spears has officially joined the Free Britney movement as the singer made a major stride in her conservatorship case Wednesday. Hello, everyone. Welcome to ET Live, the download. Brit is letting her army of fans mm -hmm. and letting them know she is thankful for their support. Posting this to Instagram, writing, coming along, folks, coming along. Now, new with real representation today, I feel gratitude and blessed. You have no idea what it means to me to be supported by such awesome fans. God bless you all. And then, for the first time, use that hashtag, mm -hmm. Free Britney. Meanwhile, Spears' longtime boyfriend, Sam Asgari, commented on the post, writing, quote, the internet is about to explode, <laughs> hashtag Free Britney. Meanwhile, Brit Brit's sister, Jamie Lynn, also weighed in, posting these cryptic messages to her Instagram stories. One was this quote right here from the late Christopher Reeve that reads, once you choose hope, anything's possible. The next reads, dear Lord, can we end this expletive once and for all? Amen. I mean, amen. Amen. These posts come on the heels of two very big updates mm -hmm. in Britney's conservatorship hearing that took place on Wednesday in Los Angeles. And the first big update, the judge in the case granted Britney Spears permission to hire her own attorney, something that Britney has vocalized in the last testimony that she So was that always an, was that always off the cards was it? She wasn't allowed to have her own lawyer. She wanted. And Britney wasted 
no time, she selected Matthew Rosengart, who you're seeing right there. He is a former federal prosecutor who's had a laundry list of high-profile cl clients, including Steven Spielberg, Ben Affleck, and Sean Penn. Sean Penn even called Rosengart a, quote, tough as nails street fighter. Well, we're going to need him to fight the good fight for Britney. Say, we shall see, right? <laughs> well, joining us now to talk all things Britney and her conservatorship case is Hot Bench's very own judge, Tanya Acker. Tanya, thank you. Stelly, S-T-L-E, S-T-4-L-E. Hello, Stelly. This is really off topic, but me and my friends are coming to Australia for a year and we are desperate to know how common big spiders are. Um, That is pretty off topic. Uh, Very common. Very common. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Nice but to see you. It's so, so great to see you. We got a lot to unpack. Let's mm -hmm. start with the fact that there was a big win for Brittany, obviously, getting to appoint her own attorney. And she says she now has real representation. What do you think this means for her? Well, I think that the fact that uh, she now has a lawyer, uh, a very good lawyer, mm -hmm. who she has picked, you know, someone who she can trust, someone who uh, is really going to signal to her and represent to her that he's in it for her. He's accountable to her. So uh, I, it is, it's a very big win for her. And I think that certainly for people who are concerned that no one is looking out for her, uh, Rosengard's mm -hmm. appointment is certainly, you know, should, should assuage a lot of those concerns. I love that you mentioned kind of he has her best interest in mind. Would you say that's a benefit? And in fact, what are some other benefits of having someone that she was able to hand pick versus having a court appointed lawyer like she has had for the past 13 years? Well, you have to remember, even the court appointed lawyer, uh, that lawyer's duty was to Brittany, but certainly uh, with the testimony that we heard yesterday, with the testimony that Brittany gave previously, whether or not her concerns were being represented was something that at least based on that testimony seemed to be at issue. Why are they cutting to this repeated vision over and over again? I think, okay, so without watching the rest of this, because they're just going to keep going over and over and over again. Fuck, are you kidding me? Okay, so she's been she's able to hire her own lawyer is the point of that. Sorry, Entertainment Tonight, fire out. You're drawing out to a 10-minute story of that? Get out of here. Podsky, I've had some experience. Who did that? Who did that? Steph, I can't say your handle, Stally, S-T-L-E. Thanks for the sub. Much appreciation. Uh, Potsky, I've had some experience with this through my refugee advocacy. We have cases where our clients totally lost it. Some committed violent crimes. None of them have had an order as extreme as this. So this is certainly a US thing is what you're saying. Like this kind of level of it wouldn't exist outside of America. Like in Germany, this wouldn't even be a thing. Yeah, right. Stally. Okay, Stally is how you say it. Stally. Um, I tell you what, Stelly, here's a little thing, a little, um, well, you said you're coming to Australia and um, I'd love to talk about that with you, but because we're talking or we've, we've just finished talking about Brittany, if you want to actually have an Australian discussion, you're welcome to come over. I'm going to put it in the chat here, my DLive channel. I do stream on DLive as well as YouTube. Um, and if you want to have a chat with me over there about this, I'm happy to, to discuss Australia. Did that not pop up in the chat? Dude, this is not working for me lately. Why is that not working? I thought I'd just put my link in the chat. Um, that'd be awesome. Yeah, okay, let me just get you the link. I don't know why it didn't come up. I'm having a few issues with the Stream Deck link. Um, why did that? Yeah, right, still not popping up there. Um, where is my DLive link then? Okay. Oh, well, I don't have a link to my DLive channel, but you can find me on DLive.tv slash gives a minute. DLive.tv slash gives a minute. I used to call, I'm used to all Australian bugs and spiders as I've been here all my life in Australia. David, there there are a bunch of big spiders here. But yeah, we what I'm, what I'm kind of getting at is that we have more of an open form chat on DLive. This stream here was a specific stream uh, to... Uh, to talk about Britney. So if you want to have more of a free-form discussion, and tonight I'm going to be drinking some Jack Daniels and having cap game and have a bit of a, a chit-chat, that's probably more of the place to do it. But um, 
Yeah, uh, interesting story, Britney Spears. It's saddening. I made my point pretty clear. I think we're to blame for this as the me as the public. We're the ones that are causing all of her troubles. Let her just make music and let's enjoy music. And that's how it should always be, right? Let's enjoy the music. You don't have to follow her around. You don't have to go and see what she's buying from the store. You haven't got to chase her into bathrooms. Don't worry if she's cutting her hair. Who gives a shit? She's a musician. Let her make music. Let's enjoy that. Case closed. Uh, is DLive a website or an app? Let me just give you the, let me just, I'll just put the link in the chat here. I'll just literally type it in because I don't know why I'm not getting it here. Um, I've got an, I've got a um, stream deck, which should be popping it in the chat, but it's not. I'll just pop it in the chat here. There you go. There you go. That's the link to the, to the, um, to my channel on DLive. Thanks for being here, folks. Uh, I'll see you all on DLive later on this afternoon, this evening, for some boozes. Cheers. I'll download the app. Thanks, Stally. See you there.